The Linear Generator Invention Kit is all about electromagnetic induction and alternating current. My classes are both 7th and 8th grade students in one classroom of mixed ability levels. It serves as an elective and so students come from a variety of different contexts. This unit takes about 10 to 45 minute class periods. Before starting the Linear Generator Invention Kit, they should have done the Solenoid Invention Kit as a prerequisite. They also should have some introduction to 2D design skills, so they must be able to design different pieces in Inkscape or another 2D design software, and then use the laser cutter to cut those pieces out. Students should also uh, have basic understanding of how to use a hot glue gun and a soldering iron. There's also safety requirements to use all those devices in our lab. So the Linear Generator Invention Kit is all about alternating current. And so the lab sequence, lab one, two, and three, all identify different aspects of alternating current and show different representations of it. Starting in lab number one, we use a galvanometer or a simple ammeter to identify that the needle is going to move back and forth between positive and negative current. Students might be confused about what this means, but they're going to see this same uh, representation in different forms. Lab number two, we then wire two LEDs in reverse, solder them together, and connect that to our solenoid. As our magnet moves back and forth, the lights will alternate on and off. Again, another representation of positive and negative current. In lab number three, we use a PASCO device, which allows us to measure voltage over time. The resulting graph of voltage over time is a wave, again, alternating between positive and negative current. And so students see that needle moving back and forth between positive and negative current. They see the lights alternating um, as the direction of the current switches. And then they see the wave generated, which again also alternates between positive and negative. The culminating project for the Linear Generator Invention Kit is to construct a linear generator. That simply is to get a magnet to move back and forth in and out of a solenoid to create uh, electromagnetic induction. Students get their choice as to whether they want to do a pure blocker method back and forth or if they want to incorporate the rotational hand crank. The design and fabrication process for this invention kit follows a very similar track to the solenoid invention kit. Depending on how well groups work together on the first kit, I might keep their groups the same for the second kit or I may switch up the groups depending on uh, if they weren't as successful. The first one to two days in class, we're working on a proposal where students are proposing an idea for how their linear generator will create a consistent flow of electricity. This is my way of helping students to make sure that they're on the right track before they get started with their 2D design. Once they have a proposal approved, students are then free to uh, start working on their 2D design. Or maybe they're going to start working on wrapping their solenoid and, and testing their ideas first. Once they have a design, they, they laser cut, and we follow an iterative process of getting their measurements right, making sure their platform uh, is nice and sturdy, and then also figuring out the mechanics of a rotational crank or a uh, back and forth with a blocker. The design and fabrication process again culminates in a, an exhibition where students walk around the classroom in a gallery walk format. Um, and exhibit their projects to their classmates and open it up to questions and comments. Student groups help me evaluate different projects as we walk around the room. When students struggle in this unit, I often bring them back to the solenoid invention kit because really the main discovery here was that the process works in reverse. If we could go from electricity to magnetism in the first invention kit, we could also go the other direction. We can go from magnetism into electricity. Sometimes in lab two, students don't understand why the lights are alternating back and forth. And so one of the scaffolds that I put in place is to help students understand how an LED works. And so hooking it up to a simple nickel battery will show that the light turns on when the current is moving in the correct direction, and that the light will not turn on if it's moving in the opposite direction. One of the challenges in this kit is that we're using the laser cutter a lot more frequently. And so with between six and 12 groups within a class, um, it can often become a bottleneck to use the laser cutter as a lot of student groups work sim at similar paces and are trying to get their materials cut out. Um, and with only one machine, that tends to lead to a lot of wait time for some students. One of the things that I've really found is that groups of three aren't always as effective. So I've switched to almost an exclusive pair model where students are paired um, because I just find in groups of three that there's always one person who is able to kind of defer to their teammates uh, and not contribute as much. And so where possible, I use groups of two. 
Obviously with two different choices in the linear generator, a blocker, consistent movement back and forth in just a linear fashion versus the rotational hand crank, for my students that need a little bit of push, I strongly encourage them to do a rotational crank because the mechanics of getting that to work are a lot more difficult and a lot more challenging, but ultimately more rewarding if they can get that to work. Paired with the solenoid invention kit, the linear generator really establishes the foundational knowledge for the third kit, which is the linear motor. If students have a good grasp of electromagnetic induction, paired with the understanding that an electric current can create a magnetic field, both of those two concepts are going to be used when students try to push and pull something away in the linear motor. I love the fact that he, a lot of sessions, he leads up to the kids instead of forcing his own ideas onto them, running it by us, making sure we agree with it, and kind of, you know, creating a, a, a unit that works really well together, opposed to just having people forced together, have to work together, we have no choice. Engineering, I thought, wasn't something that I was very good at, but um, I think now I'm starting to like the class because I'm learning a lot more than my other classes, I think, and just a different concept.